Hi, I'm Mike with Utastic, sitting here with Igor Polovoy. Igor does a lot of uh, free and open source development on the Java platform. He's created tools uh, uh, underneath the Java Lite uh, family of, of, of well, tools. Yeah, frameworks. Yeah. Of frameworks, uh, one being Active Web, Active JDBC, uh, JSPAC, and uh, the, what was it, the HTTP Lite? HTTP Lite. Basically, it's a very small... Uh, okay. Um, Client to access HTTP services. So you kind of have this this um, family, this framework, this stack of tools that you've built. What kind of led to you creating those? Uh, well, a kind of envy, I think. Uh, uh, for for the time being, I was a typical Java guy, you know, not paying attention to what's happening outside mm -hmm. Java. In the meantime, in the meantime, the Ruby on Rails uh, revolution took off, and back in 2007, I was in the project which. Uh, uh, it was a Java project, but then Rails was slowly introduced into mm -hmm. the project, and uh, I picked up Ruby on Rails, uh, Ruby as a language, and then Ruby on Rails, and I saw that, you know, developing with Ruby on Rails was so much faster and better than uh, developing anything that we had in Java. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, okay, Ruby developers enjoy this fantastic framework. Why don't we have it in Java? Okay, so you were just like, how can I make something that's as, as quick to develop with? And that's where Active Web came from. Well, no, that was not my immediate... Uh, my immediate uh, reaction to this was, great, somebody must be developing oh, right okay. now. Yeah, you wanted to see what was out there. Uh, and I waited a couple of years, from mm -hmm. 2007 to 2009, uh, but nothing like that came out. Mm -hmm. So I rolled up my sleeves and... Uh, Started developing first active JDBC. Okay, so you started with the database yeah. first, and um, and uh, did, was that something that you mostly used for your own projects or? or oh no no no! This was uh, from from the very beginning. It was used on uh, commercial projects. Uh, we were building a massive uh, system for an insurance company, and we had two and a half months to start and finish a massive project. So if we didn't have an agile tool. Well, you know, if we even, even went with something like Hibernate, at the mm -hmm. time I was managing a rel relatively small team. It was a team of four people plus myself. And uh, with Active, Active JDBC, but by the time we started the project, Active JDBC was already working. Right. Not all features were there. Uh, was it 80% or was it? Well, it was probably 80% uh, of what we needed for that one project. Okay. <laughs> so you had to implement the rest kind of Yes, and, and, and it was really funny because, the, the, you know, um, as a developer architect, sometimes uh, you architect things right and sometimes you architect things the wrong way. Right. Uh, this one was architected right because uh, when we hit the necessity of having, having many to many relationships, we didn't have it in Active JDBC. Mm -hmm. And my guys were like, okay, back to Hibernate. I'm like, wait, we're <laughs> going to have it two days from now. Yeah. And we had it two days from now. Yeah. From so, so it was kind of battle tested from the word go. You had oh, yeah. the idea, yeah. and then yeah. you immediately put it into production. And by the way, the, the first implementation was for a crazy schema in Oracle. Mm -hmm. So right there, so <laughs> we, we had so many problems. So is Active JDBC Oracle specific, or is it? No, no, no. It's it's uh, it's not Oracle specific. Uh, mm -hmm. The next implementation was for MySQL. And then uh, basically. There's not much difference between different databases other than uh, generating very specific queries for specific things, like so pagination. And how did you go about implementing all these adapters? Oh, um, basically I implemented Oracle, MySQL, and Postgre, mm -hmm. and H2, and two um, dialects for um, Microsoft uh, SQL Server were donated by the community. Okay, so this was, you had already released it and it was out in the wild. And by the way, what license is Apache? Apache license. Apache. Apache. Okay, so you, how were you sharing? How did people outside of your community get to find out about? Um, well, I didn't really uh, do much, too much effort or any mm -hmm. effort to uh, publicize it. I basically threw it out into a Google code mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I'm assuming that most people who find these projects are people who have had experience in mm -hmm. Ruby and Rails and then start Googling like Active Record for Java or, okay. or you know, things like that. Yeah. So, so the, it's that, that similar wording is it's a little bit intentional because you want people to be able to make that the leap Yeah, over. you mean Active JDBC? The, yeah, the, I, I was thinking what to name this thing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't particularly want to name it a funny and non-existing you know, right. uh, name. And nobody uh, would be able to tell right. I thought that Active times. Record is a good uh, name. Uh, it's also a name of a pattern. Mm -hmm. But um, 
So I took the word active because it actually, you know, as opposed to like passive uh, objects in, yeah, in, it's, uh, it's the in uh, right. Hibernate, it's a lot more active. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I thought, uh, on, the, on the flip side, it's a very thin veneer on top of JDBC. Okay. So active JDBC, and then came about. So, so you started with active JDBC. How did you come up with active web? What was, what was the impetus for that? Well, as soon as we implemented a massive backend system for that company, mm -hmm. we also had to implement uh, uh, about four portals. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest, implementing Active GDBC was a lot harder. And I, was, I always thought that Active Web would be something like that. Yeah. And, and it turned out to be very easy to do. Um, I also implemented a number of other frameworks before them mm -hmm. uh, to, to make it easier for people to build web applications, so I did have experience doing that, okay. so, although they didn't go anywhere. So a little bit about you know, why did you choose to make these open source tools? Why, why didn't you try to bundle them up and, and sell these tools as components? Or, or... Oh, um, well, number one reason, I'm not a salesman. <laughs> Uh, but the, the, the reality is uh, I, I used so much from open source community, mm -hmm. um, Linux, um, all kinds of Java frameworks, mm -hmm. you know, Ruby and Rails, uh, I felt that I should give something back. Okay, and uh, yeah, so, so you, you've put this out on, you created these projects and you put them out on the, the Google Sorry, Code, and uh, um, then you, you shared them out on the, on the Google Code, and people started to find them and, and they did they just say, okay, we have these adapters and here's some adapters? Or are you getting patches back from anybody? Or? I have patches. I created branches for people to work on because Google Code is actually a subversion. It's not Git. Mm -hmm. um, at the time uh, when I designed it, I guess Git wasn't as popular. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, some people were like, hey, let's move this thing to Git. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, what advantages are we going to have? Right. Uh, so, I, I guess historically, maybe someday we'll move it to Git. So, but mostly you get like what changes requests through, through the forums or? Uh, through forums, through personal emails, through, through patches, through branches, through um, issue tracking mm -hmm. system that also, uh, you know, we're hosting with Google. So people submit sometimes patches, sometimes requests, sometimes find bugs. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you have any idea like how many people are using like Active JDBC or Active Web? I'm assuming that more people use Active JDBC. Uh, then Active Web because Active JDBC was older. I guess mm -hmm. it came out before. Uh, there's an interesting uh, use for Active JDBC that I found. Uh, some people with uh, big websites mm -hmm. already built in Ruby and Rails right. uh, are building uh, massive backend processes, and they're finding Active JDBC indispensable because it. it it uh, mirrors uh, the schema oh, okay. that is so compatible it, to Rails it's very, one to one. So you can have these Java components that can hit your existing exactly the same. You can, models. I can call it your legacy Rails database versus exactly what you used to call the legacy databases before Rails. Yep. But, um, okay. So, but I mean, do you have any idea? Like, do you have how like, many people? I don't know. No. Uh, I, I throw. You know, it, it seems like. I'm I'm assuming tens of thousands, maybe. I. I, I Sorry. So it's a very active. No, no, it's very active. Oh, yeah. Because, look, I, I've been using so many different frameworks, like Log4j mm -hmm. and others, uh, but I never asked a question. Yeah. So the, the, the people who are actually active in a specific community is a tiny fraction of that community. Yeah, they, it's usually like for, for every one person you hear, there's 100 that you yeah, never like hear that. from. And so um, are, you, are you using, are you, are you still using these tools? Are these something that are still... In yes. Uh, well, the team that I started with uh, back in 2009, actually, I, I was running different teams before, but mm -hmm. in 2009 is when we started using the frameworks. Grew to 12 people within the span of two years, and we built uh, like four massive websites mm -hmm. uh, for members, uh, for insurance companies, based on active GBC and active web, mm -hmm. uh, for Johnson & Johnson, for Humana, for Discover, for insurance company Discover. Right. Um, so that was between, um, I was with that company between 2009 and 2011, mm -hmm. at which point I uh, uh, found new employment with Groupon. Ah, okay, so that's where, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, so we're, you're using the tools here. I worked on a project with you that's uh, 
be open and honest. I work on a project with Igor, and I have used the tools. They're good um, for Java. <laughs> uh, yeah. But <laughs> but uh, no, no, they're, they are they are really high quality, um, and that's anybody that I've spoken to that's used them has had the same feedback. Uh, but are you are you using them to build anything outside of Groupon? Uh, yes, I also have my own startup. It's called mm-hmm. ExpressPigeon.com. Mm-hmm. Well, ExpressPigeon as in um, it's an we'll email marketing link. system. Yeah. So the entire uh, system is built, of course, on Active GDBC Active Web because mm-hmm. I personally believe not because I built the tools, mm-hmm. but I personally believe that without Active, basically today in Java environment you have only two. Uh, contenders, the Play Framework and Active uh, Projects, the ones that I built, which allow you to develop at breakneck speed mm-hmm. uh, and maintain high quality of your code um, versus uh, kind of legacy Hibernate Spring yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, with the testing. You have the JSPAC framework as well, so yeah. it's a, it's a pretty complete stack. You, you it's kind of like with the Rails bundle. You have you know the Active Record, uh, yeah, Active Record, and then your the Rails and then the uh, test units all kind of together in one piece. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. Mike, thank you so much.